Good morning. It is Tuesday, December 22nd, and uh, here we are just three days away from Christmas. Merry Christmas from Brian and Lori Bradshaw and the Pentecostals of Troy. Uh, we trust that you'll just have a great time in the next few days. Maybe you've already been with family and friends, but again, Merry Christmas from the Pentecostal of Troy pastors, Brian and Lori Bradshaw and all of our congregation. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's Tuesday, December 22nd, 11 a.m., and we're here for our Tuesday devotion. And uh, we're just uh, excited about this time of the year. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, and uh, it is a wonderful time of the year. And we trust that you can find peace and comfort in this time of the year. Uh, just want to make a note that tomorrow night, December 23rd at 7 p.m. at our church, we'll be having a Christmas candlelight service. This should last 30 to 45 minutes. We're going to be singing traditional carols and things like that, contemporary carols. So we invite you to come out. We are in person uh, and you're welcome to come. We do have uh, safety measures and protocols in place. And, uh, but again, you're welcome to join us tomorrow night for a Christmas, uh, Christmas candlelight service at 7 p.m. 8965 Route 162 in Troy is our location. And uh, again, we are online uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, and we're in person on Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, looking forward to wrapping up this year and pushing on to uh, 2021. I uh, believe that great things are going to happen in 2021. believe that uh, God is in control. And again, we know that 2020 has been a little bit difficult uh, and uh, at times very difficult with all that's going on. But uh, God's in control of everything. And we, we just want to point our direction to that, to the fact that God's in control of everything. I want to uh, share with you... Uh, something that I uh, shared with our church this past Sunday. You'll see the date under December 20th, 2020. I, I used this uh, theme on uh, this past Sunday, all is calm. All is calm is uh, what I want to share on this devotional. It's kind of a summary, kind of a wrap, an overview of what I did on Sunday. Uh, it won't be as long, but I just wanted to I wanted to share this with uh, the audience today because uh, I believe that the Lord <clears throat> gave this to me uh, for this particular season of 2020, this particular year of 2020, all is calm. And uh, my thought comes from the Christmas carol, uh, Silent Night, right? Silent Night is one of the most popular Christmas carols that there is. And uh, sung right uh, I think I've seen somewhere like over 300 languages and uh, it's just a tremendous Christmas carol that is sung and so uh, full disclosure I uh, I had not done you know uh, research on that Christmas carol in particular and so the last week or so I've been doing some research on that particular Christmas carol Silent Night because of that phrase that's in it right Silent Night Holy Night all is calm and, and again, in the midst of this chaos and turmoil and pandemic and social injustice, political strife, wars, famines, nature, right? Uh, a record setting hurricane season in, uh, in our country. Uh, you know, so nature's been, been very active. Uh, so 2020's, right? Been anything but calm. <laughs> it's been anything but, uh, and the word here, calm, and another word, peace, peace and calm, uh, they, they kind of have this, you know, similar meaning, and they come from uh, the word uh, tranquility, right? Tranquility, so calm. You think of calm winds, calm water. Uh, you think of peacefulness. And uh, so 2020 has been anything but that, right? It's been crazy. And, uh, but in the midst of this, I just felt like I should share from this beautiful uh, Christmas carol that all is calm because God's in control, friends. God's in control. 
And when God's in control, while it may seem like there's chaos and uncertainty and things are spinning out of control, it's really not. God's in control and he got us in the palm of his hand. And, uh, you know, it's just tremendous uh, to know these things that, that, that God's in control. And here's what's interesting about Silent Night. Silent Night was performed publicly for the first time on Christmas Eve, 1818 in Austria. Christmas Eve, 1818 in Austria, Silent Night was performed for the first time. And uh, there was a couple people that made, uh, made Silent Night happen. And uh, I want to show you their pictures. Uh, <clears throat> so here we, here we go. Uh, let me give you just a little bit of backdrop on this. On uh, December 24th, 1818, uh, Joseph Moore, right here on, on this side, he, he, he was a, uh, a, a priest, a father in a church, in, a little church in Austria. And on December 24th, 1818, he took this, it was a poem originally, Silent Night was a poem that he had written previously. And so Joseph Moore, for his midnight mass, wanted to share a, 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 new, a new carol, right? And so his friend lived in the next town, Franz Gruber. And uh, Mr. Gruber was a schoolmaster, but he's also the church organist and the, the choir master. And so uh, Father Moore takes this poem uh, and, and uh, Mr. Gruber was also a, uh, besides being an artist, he was a composer, right? And so Father Moore says to, to his friend, you know, put a melody to this, make a composition so that we can sing this. And uh, so because of the proximity to the river, the church organ had uh, been rendered unusable because of flooding. And so he wrote the melody based on a guitar. Now this guitar in the middle picture here is actually Joseph Moore's guitar that was used on December 24th, 1818 to accompany Silent Night. And you can go out on the internet and find this, that it's in museum, in a museum. So that guitar is still around. And that's the guitar that Joseph Moore owned and was used. To, and they did that Silent Night. I think this is a tremendous story. And here's what even makes it more interesting for me, uh, the all is calm part. Yes, Father Moore was probably thinking the night Jesus was born, that it was a quiet night. It was a peaceful night. And, you know, uh, you read the account of the angelic host, you know, glory to God on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. You have all these things going on. Uh, but but here's, here's something to remember about, uh, about this time frame in Europe. Uh, this poem, Silent Night, was actually written uh, by Father Moore in 1816, okay? So 1818 is the first performance, but 1816 is the first time that he writes Silent Night. So I got to dig in a little bit deeper. What, what made him write this poem, Silent Night? What was happening in Europe? Well, Europe had been two decades uh, in war with Napoleon, okay? So we had this warfare that had ravaged Europe. At one point, I read that there was a half a million men on the battlefield fighting and 40,000 casualties. So, so Europe was ravaged. In Austria, where Father Moore was the pastor in this little town, men from Austria had joined the coalition forces to fight Napoleon. So no doubt death had come to their locality. And so in 1816, after the, the wars and the treaties and everything, Maybe, maybe beyond the Christmas story, Father Moore is thinking about what the last 20 years had rendered in Europe. And so now he's writing All Is Calm, right? It's a silent night. Maybe he's reflecting that as well, you know, inter intertwining. I don't know. I'm just speculating, but I'm just saying, kind of like 2020 for us, there's been chaos. There's been wars and famines and pestilence and plagues and coronavirus and death and dying and nature and the political strife and riots. It's just been crazy. But you know what? In the midst of all this, I want you to know that God's in control and he can bring a calm to our life. He can bring peace, tranquility in the midst of all this. And I hope that this next few days, uh, after all the gift giving and all the food and, and all the things that we're going to do, I hope that we can 
find that silent night, that holy night, that calmness that comes because we know that the Savior of the world was born. Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh, came and, uh, and, and, and gave us the greatest gift, the gift of eternal life. And that should calm us to know that, as Paul said, if in this life only I have hope, I am of all men most miserable. Friends, we've got a better place that we're going to, and there's going to be no strife, no turmoil, no upheavals, no pandemics. We're going to go to a place that's utopia, and we're going to be with Jesus forever and ever. And so Silent Night, what a great story. And to think about that, in 1816, this priest wrote it, and it was coming off of turmoil and chaos and death and destruction and upheaval and, and all these things, but yet he found in the birth of Christ, there was a calmness, a stillness, a, a peace that came with that. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, we look at these men and, you know, don't know everything about their lives, but, but my goodness, what a great, what a great story that, that all is calm. And, uh, you know, uh, one thing I want to just share is going into 2020, I, I spoke to our church on January 12th of 2020, and I gave them, uh, this verse because I was looking for a 2020 verse and so I came across John 20 19 20 and 21 and notice this is bookend 19 says peace be unto you 21 says peace be unto you and in the middle it says when they saw the Lord they were glad so the backstory is is Jesus has been crucified the, the the disciples were afraid and there was chaos right there was uncertainty there was upheaval death destruction they were afraid they were going to die and this is the evening that Jesus rose from the grave and the disciples are gathered and he appears in their midst. And the first thing that he gives them is peace be unto you in the midst of chaos, turmoil. Then it says when they saw him and they knew him because of his <clears throat> hands and his, uh, he showed them his hands and his side. They were glad when they saw the Lord. And then he closes that dialogue with him saying, peace be unto you. Right. And so, uh, uh, I shared that with our church as our focus scriptures for this year. And uh, in the midst of all this, we had no idea what we were going to be facing. But in the middle of it all, there he is, Jesus. And it makes me happy to know that in the middle of all this, Jesus is saying, peace be unto you, peace be unto you, right? And uh, it's a great, great thing. Another, another scripture, uh, I chose Psalms 20. What, verses one through nine for our focus chapter for the year. I'm not going to read all of that, but verse two, for instance, send help, send the help from the sanctuary, right? Send help from the sanctuary. Verse seven, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen. Stand up, save Lord, let the King hear us when we call. And so this is a chapter that we can look to and, and, and again, these things bring calmness and peace to our lives to know that God is with us. Amen. Let the king hear us when we call. God hears your prayers, friends. God hears and answers all of our prayers this morning. And uh, on this Tuesday, I just want to, I want to impart to you uh, that uh, I don't know what you've been through this year, but I'm speaking peace and calm for you, not just the rest of this year, but in 2020. We're believing that God's going to do some great things and, and bring some peace and calm. Let's go back to uh, some scriptures here as we move along in this devotion this morning, and we'll, we'll wrap it up here in a minute. Uh, but we know that we know that uh, Jesus came to give us some good things. And look here, this is uh, from the New Living Translation. Uh, and I uh, just want to share this with you. I am leaving you with a gift peace of mind and heart. And again, peace and calm come from the word tranquility. So he's saying, I'm leaving with you a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or don't be afraid. And in the King James version, he says, it's my peace, right? My peace, he, that, that he owns this peace and this tranquility and nobody, nobody uh, can take it away from us. He, he is the one that is living. Now, here's the deal. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, for unto us a child is born, right? A son is given, the government will rest upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So here is the Prince of Peace 
he is bequeathing to us in John 14, 27, because, you know, princes of the old time, the son of the king or the queen, the prince, they, they had oversight of a geographical area, right? And in the feudal system. And so who, who, who's in control of peace? The prince of peace is. The prince of peace. And the prince of peace is saying, I'm leaving you this, my people. Uh, I'm leaving you this gift. Uh, I own it. Uh, it's my territory, not, not the devil's territory. It's my territory. I own it, and I'm giving it to you. And I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be troubled. Right? It's kind of the same things he was telling his disciples in the midst of all that chaos and turmoil. So he, he is uh, leading us. And, and, and Paul uh, uh, dovetails on this, the Lord of peace, right? He's the Lord. He is the Lord of peace. And he's going to give us peace. He owns this peace, this calmness, this tranquility, right? He is the Lord. The Lord operated the same thing uh, in, in past time in history. We see this uh, particular thing that's going on. So, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this out this morning. I just hope that you'll find calmness in the next few days, in the midst of the hustle bustle, in the midst of the chaos of all 2020. I hope you'll find some calmness and peace and know that God is with you and that he's bequeathed to us as the Lord, as the Prince of Peace. That's his domain, his territory, and he's given it to his people. Reach out and take a hold of it on this Tuesday morning. God bless you. Uh, we'll probably take, as we have been hitting and missing on these devotions, we'll probably see you in a, in a week, probably mainly back here next Tuesday on uh, December 29th to do another Tuesday devotion. And until then, we want to wish you again a Merry Christmas. And if we don't get back online, Happy New Year. And uh, we just, again, want to just whisper the words, all is calm. Blessings.